Some people believe that true victory can only be achieved when the victor stays morally uncompromised, by never sacrificing their dignity to score a cheap win. What are those people called? Oh right, suckers. Because actually, there are loads of really great ways to win at games if only you're willing to betray your ideals of dignity and fair play. The best and most exploitable part of a stealth system is the bit where the enemy forgets they saw you or gets bored trying to find you, and then goes back to whatever they were doing before they spotted you squatting in the shadows like a brave hero. In Skyrim, the sneaking system lets you knock an arrow, then edge out from behind cover and shoot a boss in the face before he's absolutely sure he can see you down there. Then you sneak back into cover, out of view, and prepare to repeat the operation like a thousand times according to your archery skill and enemy toughness. We'll leave it to the Greybeards to worry whether this is beneath the dignity of the prophesized Overkeen. Because hey, it kept my low-level Dragonborn from being flattened by high-level enemies a number of times. The Bards will not sing of this night. Hail, it's about time. StarCraft 2 is very much the chess of sci-fi strategy games, and it has several distinct advantages over chess. One, better graphics, and two, additional opportunities for annoying the hell out of your opponent with cheap and cheesy early win tactics like the double proxy barracks. Put your hands up for the double proxy barracks! That guy knows! In this infamous opening move, a Terran player starts the match by sneaking over to his opponent's base and building a cheeky barracks near the entrance before they notice, then spamming the enemy's undeveloped base with cannon fodder infantry. When it works, the Terran player gets a win either on account of an insurmountable economic lead or how the enemy quits out of rage and disgust and disgusted rage. Hey, a win is a win, right? Guys? Get rid of him, Baron! Oh, that's gonna be a pleasure. If you can't run away and hide, your next best bet is running just far enough to be out of reach of a boss who will otherwise take you to pieces. Cool guy Adam Jensen had better hope no one saw him defeating Lawrence the Bull Barrett early on in Deus Ex Human Revolution. Ow, alright, maybe if I just... Okay, what if I just... Oh. Alright, alright, how about if I just go cry in this corner where he can't reach me and blindly throw grenades at him until he dies? Ah, oh, that's better. Oh, and if David Sarif asks, just tell him I like karate chop the guy in half, yeah? Attention, I will now talk about 2009's Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. If you've been too busy to finish this six-year-old game and yet not somehow too busy to watch this video, beware of story spoilers ahead. Oh, what's that? You've nearly finished Uncharted 2? What the hell? Drake. Drake! And suddenly, Zoran Lazarevich wants to play tag, only it's the kind of tag where he's always it and he gets a shotgun. I want to say that there's no shame in running away, doing laps of the battleground while kiting him in a big circle, and firing wildly when you think it's safe, but... Oh, why won't you die? There's a little bit of shame in it. You don't have the will. Maybe not. But they do. Have you invited a friend round for split-screen GoldenEye Deathmatch? Are you not bothered if they never accept an invitation from you again? You'll want to choose Oddjob as your character then. For reasons known only to develop a rare, Oddjob was by far the shortest character in GoldenEye's entire roster. So short, in fact, that the auto-aim regularly fails to lock onto him, meaning other players have to fiddle around with the hypersensitive manual crosshair to land a shot. Which would be justified were it not for the fact that the actor who played him in Goldfinger, Harold Sakata, was 5 foot 10. Are you sure you weren't confusing him with Knickknack? Be honest, Rare. If you really want to crush your opponent's morale, select the slappers only weapon set and persuade them that Jaws, due to his size, is clearly the strongest character. In reality, the big guy's reach is so massive that he swings right past Weenie Whittle Oddjob at close range. <laughs>
Guaranteed victory. Also guaranteed slap. <laughs> sufficiently skilled to complete a tricky level in Angry Birds, but also not too proud to pay real money to win at Angry Birds, you can always pay for the mighty eagle to come and demolish the entire level on your behalf, like a feathery assassin you hired for 79 pence that you could have alternatively used to buy three chocolate curly whirlies. Three! I'm not Angry Birds, I'm just disappointed birds. In The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, Stevens, the uptight butler, realises that true dignity comes down to, and I quote, not removing one's clothing in public. In defiance of which, the protagonist of Saints Row the Third can disrobe and run around Steelport with the whole butcher's shop flapping around. Thank God for pixelation. 600 seconds of streaking gets you $5,001, or enough for a second-hand car, and one single respect point, because I guess Saints Row respects your decision to be a butt-naked gang boss, even if it now can't look you in the eye. Worth it? Round one, fight! There's a special therapy-proof corner of my childhood memories dedicated to the thing in Street Fighter 2 where your opponent would spam you with the same lay move over and over but you were powerless to stop it. Vega, Dal Seymour Bison with the low slides, I'm looking at you. Every time. If that was you back in the 90s then, well, I'm embarrassed for you. Enough! Those were a bundle of dignity free ways to win at video games if you can live with yourself afterwards. Now the dignified thing to do would be not to ask you to like and subscribe for more of these videos on Outside Xbox, but we don't have any dignity so please like and subscribe for more videos like this on Outside Xbox.